In the last video, we showed you how to get started with NGRX Component Store. In this video, we'll show you how to manage side effects with Component Store. The example displays a list of products and allows you to manage the items in the list by selecting, updating, and deleting products. Now we want to connect this to an API instead of just managing the list of products in memory. Effects in NGRX Component Store are similar to NGRX effects, but with one key difference. There are no actions in Component Store, so the connection between the store and the side effects is much more direct. You can define effects directly in the Component Store class and use them in a similar way as you would with NGRX effects. To show effects in Component Store, we're going to use a product service which is going to connect to an actual API that manages the list of products and it has methods to list all products to add update and delete a product to start I'll inject the product service into the component store and import it next I'll define a method to load the products using the product service we'll name it load products the load products effect is defined by using the effects method that's provided by the component store class. It receives an observable as an argument, which is used to trigger the side effect. Next, we'll bring in the exhaust map operator from RxJS and use it to fetch the products. After the products are fetched, we we'll use the tap operator with the list of products. You should also handle errors in your observable streams. I'm using catch error here with an empty observable just as an example. In the tap operator, we we'll use the set state method like before to update the state with the loaded products. You can call these methods from the component itself, but to keep things isolated, we'll define an init method that calls load products and add that to the component later. An effect in a component store can also take additional arguments. X will update the add product method to use an effect. We'll update the method to use an effect and define the input as an observable of a name and description in an object. You can use an effect with a synchronous value or with an observable of values and it handles them both appropriately. In this effect, we'll use the concat map operator to process adding items in order, along with making the service request. After the API call is finished, we use the set state method to add the new product to the collection in the local state. For update product, we'll define an effect that receives an observable of a product and use the concat map operator again in the product service to update the product, along with updating the product in the local state. For delete product, we'll define an effect that uses an observable of a string, and this time use the merge map operator to process each request independently. Next, we'll move on to the products component. As the product ID is coming from the API, we'll update the template. Next, we'll call the product store init method in the ng on init method of the component to load the products. Lastly, we'll remove the generated ID when adding a product and save the changes. The products component still functions the same way but with using side effects that are still isolated from the component to make API calls and update the state reactively. And that's a walkthrough of handling API calls with side effects using NGRX Component Store. In another video, I'll show you how to manage collections using NGRX Entity with NGRX Component Store. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as that really helps me out. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.